Hey guys, I'm Zafira and today I'm making my first custom Nandoroid. So this is my base. I used the Alien Nandoroid from Love Life in her sport version and the Mako Nandoroid. And these are all of the parts that need to be customized. The first thing I did was cutting off the extra strands of hair from Ailey's back piece of her hair because my Claire uh, Nandoroid doesn't need those. And after that I tried to yeah, even it a little bit more with my X-Acto knife and then smoothing it down with sanding. The next thing that needed to go was this hair clipper. First I tried cutting it off with my X-Acto knife and then pulling it out with my pliers. Which was pretty hard to do because it stuck in there pretty bad, but you know, in the end it worked. Next thing on my to-do list was the hair elastic. In my opinion it was way too bulky for my Claire, so I tried making it smaller by cutting off these yeah, little bumpy parts and yeah, overall make it smaller by cutting off parts and sanding it down and smoothing it. The jeans needed a little customization too, because I wanted to give them this fringy jeans look. I made random cuts all around the leg opening to create a rough edge. Now it was time to sculpt, and for this I used a little bit of green stuff I had left. Since green stuff is an epoxy sculpt, you need to mix both materials, yellow and blue together, in equal parts until you get a uniform green color. Be careful not to use too much at first, because once you've mixed those compounds, there's no turning back and your green stuff will air dry after a few hours. The first thing I sculpted was the belt for my shorts, and I did so by making a little sausage, then flattening it and putting it around my shorts. After that, I tried smoothing it out with my sculpting tools. Now it was time to fill in the gap that the hair clip left, so I put in a tiny bit of green stuff, smoothed it out with my fingers and then refined it with my sculpting tools. Since I didn't want my vest to be so cropped, I filled in the gaps with green stuff and smoothed it out. Next thing I wanted to do is to turn this glass into a little red herb. And you probably won't see everything I did because it was a little pain in the ass, so yeah, we'll just skip over this part. After that I made some sleeves by putting some green stuff on my arm pieces, then smoothing it out and refining it with my sculpting tools. So same procedure as with every other piece. And the same goes for my leg pieces. I filled in the tiny little gap between these flappy things on the boots and smoothed it out again. Now it was time to let everything dry and harden and after that it was time for sanding. The sanding worked great on some parts and not so great on other parts for example. I wasn't really happy how my vest turned out to be because I didn't have the right material so I couldn't really smooth out the seams of the green stuff on the vest. So, ah. Next step was priming my pieces so the paint will stick on later. For that I used white spray primer from Vallejo. After everything was dry it was time for the fun part. Since I was stupid and primed over my skin part pieces which had the right color, I needed to paint those again. Next time I would mask them out and save some time. For the most part I used my airbrush, but later turned over to my trusty paint brushes for the smaller pieces and more delicate pieces. You can use pestle chalks to refine your painting. Just scrap off some chalk dust with your X-Acto knife and use it to brush it on your pieces. I used it to further darken my skin tone since it was way too light for the faceplate and I think it worked pretty well, so here you can see a before and after. But of course the main reason to use this technique is to refine your painting as I said before. I mainly use this to get a little bit more contrast and to get more shadows, so I use a darker shade of everything and put it in the creases and the little cracks to yeah, get more details in my paint job. After I was done with my paint job, I sealed everything with an acrylic matte varnish so the paint won't scratch off so easily. And here we have a little before and after and this is how it turned out to be. Okay, so that's the finished version of my Claire custom Nandroid and I'm pretty happy with her. She's not perfect, but you know, for the first custom Nandroid, I think it's okay. If you'd like to see more of those custom Nandroids, let me know in the comments and yeah, I would be happy if you subscribe to our channel and see you next time. Bye-bye.